we begin with what is a wetland. Wetlands by definition are not uplands. Wetlands are places in the landscape where water gathers in great enough quantity for long enough duration to select for living things that can tolerate or thrive in the wet conditions and to force physical and chemical changes to the soil substrate. Water, both its quantity and quality, is the key factor in determining if a wetland will occur and what kind of wetland it will be. How do we recognize a wetland? All wetlands have three factors in common that distinguish them from uplands. First, all wetlands have a predominance of plants adapted for growing in persistent wet conditions. Second, all wetlands have soils that form in response to persistently wet conditions called hydric soils. Hydric soils can have a mineral origin made up of sand, silt, and clay sediments and be relatively lacking in organic material, or they can have an organic origin formed from the accumulation primarily of dead plants. Third, all wetlands have sufficient water for long enough duration to give a competitive advantage to wetland plants and to create wetland soils. How do we tell the different wetlands apart? There are many different kinds of wetlands in the Adirondacks. We've already talked about the three factors that distinguish wetland from upland, hydrophytic vegetation, hydric soils, and wetland hydrology. Once you've decided that the area in question is a wetland, you can ask additional questions that will reveal what kind of wetland it is. Is the soil in the wetland an organic or mineral hydric soil? If the answer is organic, the wetland is generally called a peatland. Peat is undecomposed organic matter and is deposited under wet, anoxic, acidic, and cold conditions. Within the general category of peatland, there are two kinds that are recognized, bogs and fens. Here's how to separate them. Bogs or peatlands that receive their water and nutrients primarily from precipitation, have an acidic pH, less than 4.8, are separated from groundwater and are dominated by sphagnum moss and heath shrubs like leatherleaf, Labrador tea, sheep and bog laurel, and bog andromeda. Trees such as black spruce occur in bogs, but are usually restricted to the drier edges or are severely stunted in growth. Bogs often occur in isolated depressions, but can develop on large waterlogged flat areas. Bog variations include shoreline bogs, which are formed like other bogs, but are located alongside lakes or alluvial river corridors. Shoreline bogs are explored in greater detail in the video Bog Ponds and Shoreline Bogs. Here we see a range of typical bog plants, including pitcher plants, sphagnum moss, sedge, and leatherleaf. Fens or peatlands that receive their water and nutrients primarily from groundwater and surface water have a neutral pH greater than 4.8 and often directly connected to upwelling groundwater and surface water sources. Fens are dominated by sedges and brown mosses such as swollen scorpion moss, stiff star moss, and ribbed bog moss. Trees such as northern white cedar also occur in fens. Fens often occur associated with streams and rivulets.
If the answer to the soil question is mineral, the wetland will be a swamp or a marsh and is named and classified based on the physical characteristics of the dominant vegetation. A deep water marsh will have submerged or floating leaf plants, including common yellow pond lily, fragrant water lily, water shield, and coontail. Near the southern end of Lake Champlain, there are numerous deep water marshes, often seen in the midst of shrub swamps. This area is also known as the drowned lands. An emergent marsh will have emergent herbaceous plants dominate including arrowhead, broadleaf cattail, pickerel weed, and soft rush. A shrub swamp will have short woody plants dominating. Examples include speckled alder, willows, dogwoods, and buttonbush. We find shrub swamps throughout the northern forest and Adirondacks, and here, along Lake Champlain in New York and Vermont, we see large examples of the type including at Osable Marsh. In spite of its name, Osable Marsh also includes a large shrub swamp. A coniferous swamp will have tall coniferous woody plants, including northern white cedar, balsam fir, black spruce, and eastern larch. A deciduous swamp will have tall deciduous broadleaf woody plants dominating. Examples include black ash, red maple, silver maple, sycamore, eastern cottonwood, and hackberry. Deciduous swamps are the least tolerant of prolonged flooding and driest of the swamp category. In summer, you may find them high and dry as you see here on the Racket River. <laughs> 